In this video, we're going to look at some of the basic functions of the TI-8384 graphing calculator. When graphing an equation on your calculator, uh, the first thing you want to do is to solve the equation for y. It has to be set equal to y. So y by itself, everything else on the other side. And in fact, under y equals here is where you can uh, enter your graph. Uh, the window button allows you to set the viewing window that you are going to see. And typically it's set from negative 10 to positive 10. This is what we would call the standard window, uh, negative 10, positive 10 for X. And then your scale, this tells you each tick marks value, negative 10 to positive 10, scale of one. The uh, under zoom, if you, uh, sorry, when you hit graph, uh, this will actually graph your equation, and then you can adjust your window if necessary with the window button. So if you're wanting to graph an equation, you can see I've got one here. Uh, you first have to solve it for y. So I would need to get this all by itself, which I've already done here. You can see that this is the equation I want to uh, graph. So we're gonna put it into our calculator's memory by typing it under the y equal to screen here. You have a variable button that says x, theta, and then some other symbol as well. Um, that's your variable. So if I go x and I want to raise it to a power, we use this little key here. This raises it to the third power. We go minus 4 times x, so minus 4x. Oops. You can notice here that I forgot to take it out of the power. Uh, so I'm going to go back, and we're going to uh, fix this. I'm going to start over x to the third. And then I need to take it out of the power. Go minus 4x and then plus 2. We're using the standard window, which, as we saw earlier, is the negative 10 to 10. Under zoom, if you look at choice number six, mine is a little bit different here because this is have all the same features, but you want to look for Z standard, which for me is choice number three. That will automatically set it to that kind of a window. And here we have our graph. <clears throat> now, if I want to adjust this to kind of hone in on this middle part here, I can go to the window button and change this. Let's say uh, I want to put this to negative three. So, uh, At negative three to positive three. For my x's, we'll leave the scale at one. And we'll go negative uh, six to eight. Six, positive eight. Hopefully, you're doing this along with me. Scale is still the same. If I hit graph now, we have our graph on the screen here. Another feature you have is the trace feature. If you hit trace, you'll notice a little icon, a little cursor appear on your graph. And if you use the arrows, you can trace along the graph here and the ordered pairs uh, that your computer is using for your graph appear below the graph. One of the other helpful features is the zoom in and zoom out feature that you have under zoom. In fact, it's the first two choices uh, under zoom. So for example, if we want to look at how many places this equation here is, is crossing the x-axis, if I graph this, it appears that it crosses in two places, touches here and crosses here. Um, but does it? If we put our cursor close over here, um, and zoom in. So I'm going to allow you to do that right now. Go to the zoom and I want you to hit zoom in. You may need to do it twice. You should be able to see after a couple of zooms, and this one is definitely not as good as what you can see on your graph. You can see that it actually just barely is above the x-axis and it is not actually touching it between zero and one. <clears throat> so um, that's helpful to know. 
Uh, so the zoom in and zoom out feature can sometimes clarify parts of the graph uh, that we're not quite sure about. Uh, there's also some special windows. As we're going to look at this example here with y equal to x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 2. The first is your standard window, which you have already introduced to you. Under zoom, number six, it said z standard. Look here. Uh, for me, it's choice number three. So it could be that negative 10 to positive 10, negative 10 to positive 10 viewing window. Another choice under there is number four, which is your zoom decimal. For me, it's my choice number one. Um, <clears throat> what this does is it, uh, when we use the trace feature, it goes by uh, point ones. <clears throat> So as you go across there, you should see, can't see it as well on mine, but if you go to your trace feature, um, it increases by 0.1 each time. And so we're able to go from zero to X uh, input of 0.1, X of uh, 0.2, et cetera, et cetera. So it increases it by a tenth each time. And um, eventually you get to the next whole number as well. <clears throat> For choice number three, it actually creates a, I'm sorry, not choice number three, but choice number five, a square window. And this is helpful for us if we want to see it in terms of, uh, like, for example, let's see, I'll bring a choice number two here. We want to see our viewing window as a square and not a rectangle. Uh, you'll notice that your window, that it's actually wider than it is high. So for example, if we want to see this graph of a circle, the way I can do it is go to y equal to, and we're going to enter uh, square root of nine minus x squared. This is the positive one. So nine minus x squared. And we'll do the same thing on the, but do it for negative. Notice when you want to use negative, you want to use this button down here, square root. Now we're doing the, the bottom half of the circle. Because a circle is not a function, uh, it does not allow us to just uh, put it in as one function. We actually have to write two separate functions. And here we go. In a standard window, let me go back to standard, choice number three there, it actually doesn't look like a circle. Uh, that's again, because of the nature of our screen, it's more of a rectangle. Uh, but when we put it into the square uh, window, it adjusts the window so that um, our circle actually does look like a circle. The next feature I want to show you is the min and max finder. Um, and we're going to use this example here. So this is a profit and loss equation. And uh, the x value is representing the uh, computers that are made in a year. And then the y is my profit that's made. And uh, we're told that this company can produce a maximum of 100,000 computers. And Y is my profit in thousands, X is in thousands of computers. So <clears throat> as I put this into my calculator, go ahead and, and pause the program and do so. Um, and also as far as my window goes, since the max number of computers is 100,000 and X is in the thousands, we can't make more than that. I'm going to, and of course, we can't make negative uh, computers. I'm going to set my X window to go from zero to 100. And since the profits uh, can be positive or negative, we're just going to put this at negative 25,000 to positive 25,000. This is in thousands, so we're really uh, looking and at millions, uh, you know, three more zeros added onto that. When we graph this, uh, so go ahead and set your window to that. You may want to pause the thing, and then we're going to hit graph. 
And you can see that there are points where we have a negative profit when we break even. And then up here, along here, tells us our maximum profit. So how can we get our calculator to tell us exactly uh, what that would be? We do have that trace feature, if you remember. Uh, trace allows us to go along here and to uh, find these values. Now, I have a lot, you know, the scale, we could kind of poke around here and move this around to try to figure out where that max is. But above trace, you can see the cat says calc. If I go shift and then go trace, there's a function here which allows me to find the maximum. So I wonder that and find that. Choice number four for me may be a different choice number for you. And what we have to do is tell it where the left boundary is and then hit enter. So I'm gonna just go around where the peak is there and then ask for the right boundary. So basically I'm saying find it between these boundaries. Hit enter again, it finds the maximum value here. So we see the maximum here is at X value of 72.79. Those are in thousands, so that's 72,000 said that yeah, 72,700. And then this tells you what the maximum profits are. So if we move that decimal over three spots, that tells you the profits, of course, in this case, uh, it's in thousands, so that would be in millions. The next thing I want to show you here, the last one, is a scatter plot. The scatter plot is a plot of a bunch of ordered pairs. And sometimes that's what we want to see. We don't necessarily want to see them connected in any way. We just want to see them scattered as individual points. And so uh, this is when we have uh, ordered pairs, um, so an X and a Y. And so the first thing we want to do is to put this stuff into our lists. If you go to stats, this is really a statistical function, stat and then edit, takes you into a screen where you can put ordered pairs into L1 and L2. Now, I've already put these here. Um, I've defined my X as years since 2000. And so this would be my zero, this would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. This just makes it easier for our graph. And then my Ys are gonna be these speeds here. <clears throat> And so I put those into list two. Go ahead and put those into yours. Make sure that every X has a Y. You haven't skipped through. And mine goes all the way to six. And I see, yep, it has a Y that goes with it. That's one thing you want to make sure you have, because if you don't, you're going to run into an error automatically. Because you can try to plot a point that doesn't have a corresponding, or an X without a Y or a Y without an X. Uh, then we need to turn in our stat plot. And so if we will notice above y equals, it says uh, plot. I'm actually going to clear out my equation here as well. Uh, so let's just clear that out. Now I'm going to go shift plot, and it takes you to your plot screen. So you'll notice they're def by default, they're turned off. So I'm going to hit enter on one there, and we're just going to turn this on. So enter on there. The first thing there is a uh, scatter plot. It's pulling your X's from list one, pulling your Y's from list two. And then you can kind of choose what color, if you have a, a more advanced one, or just what kind of marking you want. I'm gonna, oops, get down here. I change my marking to just look dot. Enter. <clears throat> so I've turned this on. Now, as you'll notice, you know, in a standard window, 168 for Y would be way off the screen. So we would have to adjust our window to fit these. Uh, so if my X's were going from zero to 10, say, or, and my Y's were going up to say 200, uh, we should be able to see these dots. Now, under zoom, there's a choice number nine. You may have to scroll down to see it, but it's zoom stat. If you hit that, it'll actually create a window that best fits all of those points uh, that you've entered. So we can see all the points here. 
for that. <clears throat> this is a scatter plot. Now under plot, let's go back there again. And this is my plot one settings. You'll notice here that this is a different type of graph. This is called a line graph, where it's actually going to connect those dots. So if I go back to graph now, you can see those dots are connected uh, with a line. Uh, those are helpful for other types of measurements. So there you have a scatter plot and a line graph. <clears throat>